So today we have an interesting geometrical question. I am just thinking to call it a family of a circle enclosed inside a square of side length 8. You can also have a look that there is a complete circle, there is a semicircle and there is a quarter circle. All these three are some kind parts of a circle and it's like a family and they are all together inside a square and that square is having a side length of 8 cm. All we have to find is the radius of this complete circle that has been marked as x. Now our additional data was given that these three points that is this point, this point and this point. These three points are the point of tangency. Means what? They are just intersecting at, at one point and all the theorems related to the tangents can be utilized over there. So let us see its beautiful solution. So yes, as I told you that yes, there was a quarter circle and there was a semicircle in this particular square. So it's very easy to determine the radius of this both. So first of all, let's discuss the radius of this semicircle. As we can see, the semicircle has been drawn from this endpoint to this endpoint, and this is also the side length of this square. So side length of the square is equals to 8. So it forms the diameter of this semicircle also. So its diameter equals to 8. So ultimately the radius becomes 4 because half the diameter equals to radius. So we are just considering some point over here. Let this be the point. So it's going to be the center for this semicircle and also the midpoint for this side. So from here to here this length is 4, from here to here this length is 4. All this length will just form the radius and they all be equals to 4. Remember because all the things are been radius. Now what can you say about the radius of this quarter circle? Remember that the quarter circle has been drawn from this point here is the 90 degree. For the quarter circle also 90 degree and as that point is the corner of the square because of that also the 90 degree over there. Now from that corner, the quarter circle has been drawn. So ultimately this side over there and this side over there, from here to here, here's the rounder, here's the pencil, I draw the quarter circle. So ultimately that forms the radius of this quarter circle. So as the side length of the square is equal to 8, therefore the radius of this quarter circle becomes 8. Very simple, as simple as that we can say. So 8 and 8, let it be clear first of all. So 8 and 8 is going to be the radius of this quarter circle. So these two things were very simple. Now let us utilize the data of this tangent point. These three points for tangent that were point A, point B and point C. Let us mark that also. So point A, point B and point C. These three points were point of tangent. So let us use that. So before that let us just discuss the theorem related to the tangent. So if there is a circle and there is a straight line that is let it be tangent like looking. If there is a straight line that is just like a tangent means it's only one point of contact so if i will draw from radius to that point of contact it's going to be perpendicular over there it's happened when there is a straight line tangent to a circle now what if instead of a straight line i have another circle or any other circular arc we can say so if there is a big circle and there's another circle which is just tangent to it it is so the center of this bigger circle will pass the tangent point and will just form a straight line the center of the big circle, the center of the small circle and the point of tangency. These three will form a straight line. Means these three points are collinear. No matter if the circles are intersecting outside or whether it's inside like this over there and this over here. Then also the center of the big, the center of the small and this collinear, sorry the tangent point. The three are going to be collinear. And instead of this circle, if there is a circular arc and there is a circle. So this circular arc must be having some kind of center over here. So that center, the tangent point and this are going to be in a straight line whether it's outside or whether it's inside. They are going to be in a straight line. So this is these are the theorems related to the tangent and circle. When it's a straight line, the radius will meet in a perpendicular. And when it's a circular arc, then the center of that circular arc, the tangent point and the center of the smaller circle are going to be in a straight line. Yes. So now let us utilize that over here. So first of all, I'm just thinking to remove this points A, point B and this radius X, C and let this 8 and 8 be remain over there. Now first thing I was having that this point, the circle and this quarter circle is means they are the point of tangency. So this is the center of this quarter circle. It will pass and meet this point of tangency. Let it be clear. So from this point, it's a straight line and till the point of tangency. And in the middle, it will just have some point which is the center of this complete circle. So the radius of this complete circle, let it be equals to x. So just zooming over here, from this point to this point, it's going to be the radius and radius is equals to x. Now from the center of this quarter circle, 
to the circumference of this quarter circle it's going to be its particular radius and radius is already equals to 8 so complete length is equals to 8 some part is already equals to x so the remaining length that's from this point to this point it's going to be the longer minus the shorter so ultimately that length becomes over there longer that's 8 and shorter that's x so 8 minus x over there okay now the second point of tangency that is over here the straight line this straight line tangent to the circle so from the center i am drawing a straight line and it will meet this straight line perpendicular because of the theorem that a straight line perpen sorry a straight line tangent to a circle meets at 90 degree when the radius is drawn so this is going to be ultimately the radius again so it is equals to x let me just remove this 8 from here now that length is equals to x because it's the radius now i can just have this particular right angle triangle the hypotenuse is 8 minus x the base is x so we can just have this side according to the pythagoras theorem so for now let the side be equals to y so i can have that y square plus the base square that is x square is equals to hypotenuse square that is 8 minus x the whole square so here it will be y square plus x square and that is equals to here a minus b the whole square so is 8 square 64 plus x square minus 2 8 16 times x now x square and x square got cancel out from 64 and 16 x i can take 16 common so inside the bracket 4 minus x and that is equals to y square now taking the square root on both the sides and remember as y is a side we'll just go with the positive value so square root of y square is y and that is equals to square root of 16 that's 4 and square root of 4 minus x so ultimately we have the value of y that's 4 times square root of 4 minus x so just instead of y i am writing that over here so removing the y and now the particular value that we have obtained and that is 4 times square root of 4 minus x now the third point of tangency that was the circle tangent to this semicircle that point was over here now according to the theorem i can have that yes if the center of this circle if i draw a straight line from the center of the circle the point of tangency and this semicircle center it's going to be in a straight line and again we have that from year to year it's going to be the radius of this circle that is x from year to year it's going to be the radius of the semicircle that is equals to 4 yes now what we will do is just like a master step over here this is meeting over here at a 90 degree i will just extend it as a straight line no matter it will pass over here any point here's no specification it will just pass as a straight line and it will meet perpendicularly over here because i'm just drawing a straight line this perpendicular was there we can say i've just extended it so it's going to meet over there perpendicular because here's perpendicular here's perpendicular 90 degree i mean so there's a straight line now what i'm having is this particular square over here not a square we can say a quadrilateral in which all the four angles are 90 90 90 90 and 90 so in a quadrilateral all the four angles is equals to 90 degree and not the adjacent sides are not equal yeah this adjacent and this adjacents are not equal so if in a quadrilateral all the four angles are 90 degree and not the adjacent sides are equal then it the particular quadrilateral is forming a rectangle so in a rectangle opposite sides are equal so if top is 8 so this bottom is going to be 8 so this complete length so let it be clear yes from here to here this complete length is going to be 8 and this much part is already equals to x so we can have the remaining length that is longer minus the shorter so longer was 8 and shorter was x so 8 minus x is the length of this base the hypotenuse we have found and what we have to found is just the side and that's very simple now again the opposite sides are equal so this side is 4 times square root of 4 minus x removing this thing or let's just changing the color and removing this 4 from here and from this point to this perpendicular point this length is going to be 4 times square root of 4 minus x and remember that this much length is already equals to 4 so the longer is having a length the shorter is having the length so we can just have this length that is the longer minus the shorter longer is 4 times square root of 4 minus x and the shorter was 4 so we can have that thing very nicely over there just remember so now applying the Pythagoras theorem in this particular triangle why because now we can have that the hypotenuse the side and the base all are in terms of x so we can just have a clear idea over there so the base square that is 8 minus x the whole square plus the side square that was 4 times square root of 4 minus x minus 4 longer minus the shorter and the whole square and that is equals to hypotenuse square that is 4 plus x the whole square we'll just simplify this equation and we will obtain the value of x 
So 8 minus x the whole square gives me 64 plus x square minus 16 times x plus here it I will obtain as 16 plus 64 minus 16 times x minus 32 times square root of 4 minus x very simple just opening the brackets according to the identity and that is equals to 16 plus x square plus 8 times x so what I can observe is that 16 x square 16 and x square got cancelled out and just rearranging the terms so this square root of 4 minus x I will just keep it in on the one side so it can get cancelled out when I do a whole square because it's kind of radical over there so I'm just taking it over there and all these terms over here so this gone over there becomes negative 32 is there so positive 32 let it be clear yes positive 32 square root of 4 minus x that has been equals to 64 plus 64 and 64 plus 64 it's 128 minus 16 x minus 16 x and positive 8 accepted over there so minus x minus 16 minus 16 minus it becomes minus 40 times x yes now this 128 this 40 and this 32 all comes in the table of 8 so just factoring out so it will give me 16 minus 5 times x is equals to 4 times square root of 4 minus x now a simple step squaring both the sides so squared over there squared over here so squaring of this is 16 square that's 256 minus sorry plus 25 x square minus 160 times x that is equals to 16 times 4 minus x so 25 times x square minus 160 times x plus 256 is equals to 16 into 4 that's 16 into 4 that's 64 minus 16 times x now just bringing these two terms over here and here it will be 0 so 25 x square as it is minus 160 x positive 16 x gives me 144 times x plus 256 minus 64 gives me 192 yes so plus 192 and that's equals to 0 What we are currently having is kind of a quadratic equation ax square minus bx plus the constant so we can apply the quadratic equation to simplify it so x is equals to 144 plus or minus square root of b square minus that all thing will give me a kind of thing that is nothing but it's going to be 16 square root 6 its simplification is very easy you can just do it without the calculator so 16 square root of 6 and upon 2 times 25 so from here i get that from the table of 2 it goes 72 over there and 8 over here so i obtain the value of x as 72 plus or minus 8 times square root of 6 and upon 25 so this is the value of x now the thing over here is that this are we will obtain two values of x according to the plus and minus so when i am taking the positive value so i am having an approximately value 3.66 and when i am going with the negative value so i am having an approximate value 2.096 but according to the diagram the value of x x is the radius of that circle remember 3.66 is looking like a quite large number so we have to go with this that's uh, a kind of convenient so from here we have the only value of x that is equals to 72 minus 8 square root of 6 and upon 25 this is a convenient value for the x and that's my answer that x is equals to 72 minus 8 root 6 upon 25 will satisfy this equation so if you have any other method other than this you can do comment below or else you can dm me on my instagram link is in the description and someone gives a better solution with the same question and we can show it to our viewers it's best the knowledge